Okay, guys, uh, this is this is truly, truly amazing because all of our previous interviews were recorded in our marvelous Cape studio, but here we're recording the, this interview with the Vumir Lutsuk, famous Ukrainian historian, I mean, Canadian American Ukrainian, <laughs> uh, in our shipping crew. Yeah. So we can actually Remind sort of pan, pan around. Wow. Pan around just for a sec so you understand where where we are actually. Our shipping room and the Ukrainian studio in America. Anyway, as we spoke uh, earlier, uh, very simple topic. Our position, our team, uh, through the Club of Cape, our position is very simple. Uh, Russia is in the UN illegally. Uh, the two sort of foundations for Russia to be in the UN are two pieces of paper that from a point of view of uh, the UN Charter are just that, pieces of paper. One is so-called Almaty Declaration, where some countries, not all, but some countries of the former Soviet Union are saying, oh, we're not against Russia inheriting, uh, you know, being a, inheriting the nuclear stockpile and blah, 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 right? And the second piece of paper, which is indeed from the point of view of the UN Charter, is a piece of paper, is a letter from Yeltsin uh, to Perez de Cuellar, basically saying that oh, now we, we used to be Soviet Union, now we are Russia. And actually our team, uh, thanks to uh, Mr. Yeltsin, who the former U Ukraine's representative, we discovered a bunch of amazing documents, legal opinion uh, of um, Carl Fleischhauer, who was the chief uh, legal counsel of the UN, saying that since Soviet Union was dissolved, Russia had to apply from scratch. Mm -hmm. And they did it before Christmas, so that, you know, that we could uh, just share your observations on this thing. Well, look, on, on the one hand, I think everyone would agree that the peoples, and I would say peoples, or the nations of what is today called the Russian Federation, which I would personally describe as still an imperial project, a mm -hmm. colonial project. Of course, of course. The peoples, the many different peoples, including the Russians, mm -hmm. the nation, should have representation at the United Nations, eventually. Yes, of course. But the various nations that inhabit the space of the so-called Russian Federation, and again, I call it the so-called Russian Federation, uh, also have the right to national self Nation. So we think of the Chechens, the Kalmyks, and many, many others. But they are the here. Of, of course, of course. Yeah, there are dozens of them. Volga Tatars, whatever you name them. They all should have representation, uh, as should the Russians. However, as you pointed out, the way in which the Russian Federation assumed for itself the mantle of the Soviet Union, which was, of course, in the United Nations, um, is questionable. And I, so I think the, the initiative you've taken to discuss this subject, to raise it uh, in the form of the United Nations, is, is an important one. Uh, how is it that one constituent republic in the entire Soviet Union should become the bearer of the authority of the Soviet Union, and most particularly, of course, of the Security Council? This is, I think, the critical thing. You now have a state, the Russian Federation, which is breaking the rules of the United Nations Charter and absolutely vetoing any possibility of peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, how did it get that power? And I think, so the questions you've raised, and again, I'm no lawyer, some of you are lawyers and, and, and scholars in this matter in greater detail than I ever will be, but it seems to me to be a reasonable question. And so I applaud your effort. Thank you very much. Uh, in fact, uh, Russia has invented a term, continue aider state, which is ridiculous. There is no such thing in international law. I mean, uh, 
all the documents, uh, you know, the Rhodesia Agreement and the same Almaty Declaration, are talking about successor states. Yes, successor Success, states. Success, uh, I mean, of the Soviet Union, all former 15 republics are indeed successor states. Mm -hmm. But Russia invented this ridiculous term that doesn't exist in, in international law. Continuing it. It's the first time I've heard it. No, it's true. So, so it could be. No, so I mean, I, I The Zara Prodozhe, which continues your state, which it, it just doesn't exist. Yes, it, it, it seems to me to be fabricated. Of but course. Just to put it in a very delicate way, <laughs> um, I think one of the great tragedies here, you mentioned it yourself, is that the way in which the collapse of the Soviet Union resulted in the um, removal of nuclear weapons from Ukraine, from Kazakhstan as well, mm -hmm. uh, and their uh, relocation to the Russian Federation, and giving the nuclear car in effect to the Russian Federation. That was a big mistake. I, I think I was one of the very first people to write an opinion editorial in the Global Mail in Canada, that's our mm -hmm. national newspaper, in which I called